wild, ready to be ready to be reaped if we could find the labor. And I know there are laborers here tonight. And I thank you for what you're doing in the house of the Lord. I thank you today. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Well, let's do this. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let me just read a portion of scripture there just to settle our minds into the things of the Lord. Let me also say to you that what an awesome service we had this morning. Amen. And I'm so glad the Spirit of God is moving and instructing and edifying. I know that uh, uh, as, as I was leaving uh, today, the house of the Lord, uh, Kessa came and spoke to me. She says, Pastor, I just wanted you to know that uh, early in the morning we were uh, in a very difficult position with, with Josiah. He was at 105 degree temperature. And they didn't know what to do. They said, well, let, let, they, they put him in some water. They, they were trying all they could to uh, get him uh, and nurse him to help. And, and so this morning when they got up, he was still had a 103 degree fever, very sick. And the Spirit of the Lord just brought him to the house of God. And, and, and when he left today, he was fever free. And, and, and came down, I don't know if you saw that. The church was dismissed. He was out running around and enjoying himself. And so that was just such an awesome thing to see uh, that he was a touch of the Lord. And she said it was the overflow that reached him. And we know we had people praying and believing and trusting God for him. And so it was just awesome. I thought, I thought you needed that testimony to hear just how awesome God is and what he's doing. And what sometimes we come to church and we don't see uh, the things that, 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 that are going on at the altar. When in reality, awesome things are happening there. And so let's do this. You're in 1 Corinthians 12. I'm going to uh, uh, try to clarify just a few things as we finalize uh, I, I, and I think we did a very good job of covering some of the characteristics of the gift of prophecy. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let me begin reading here uh, as it begins uh, here. I'll start at verse 7. We, are, we, we have been moving through several of these. We'll find our particular verse here in verse 8. And we'll talk about that just for a moment. And then we'll, we'll put our mind to it. And i got a few thoughts that should help us prepare ourselves to be in a vessel for this gift in our lives. Look what it says here, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit, this is capital S, is given to every man to profit with all. So did you see that? But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Now this is very important for you to maybe categorize this, that the, the Spirit manifests in us. How many believe that today? That you're the manifestation of the Spirit of God. How many would say amen to that? that uh, or, or maybe I can say it maybe another way in which you've heard it. Know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? That that may be another way to categorize that or to think of yourself. That wherever you are, the power of God is present. Let me say that one more time. That wherever you are, because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, then the power of God is is present to perform any task. Can somebody receive that in the Spirit? I mean, if you can, it may be hard to see the gifts and the power and the miracles of God manifest, but if you believe that you're the temple of the Holy Spirit, that's a doctrine plain and taught theologically in the Scriptures that this is what the promise is about. How many know that Jesus said it's profitable, it's, it, it's, it's good for you that I go, it's expedient, it's worthwhile, it's purposeful that if I leave, just know I'm going to send back to you the comforter, the paracletos. He's just like me, except he's not going to be on the outside. He's going to be on the inside. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. And so, so I just want you to gather that and say to yourself that th that's why Jesus said, listen, it's freely given because why? The spirit of God came to us at no, at no cost of ourselves, but at the very cost of God himself by the blood of Jesus, right? So Jesus released him. Jesus Sent the Spirit of God, and so now the Spirit of God resides within us. So the Bible says that the manifestation of that Spirit is given to who? Oh God, let's go back and read it. We just read it. I thought, I, I thought y'all would have been to say it, and I'm going to say hallelujah, but let's look at it again. So this is 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. Every one of us. So there isn't anybody here that's the exception to the rule. God says it's going to manifest in all of us. Right? 
And in what way will we see or tangibly see the manifestation of that spirit? And so it says this, for to one is given, are y'all with me? For to one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom. Did y'all see that? To another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. Are y'all there? Y'all seeing that? So I just want I just want you to I want you to see that the Bible clearly teaches that all of us participate in the manifestation of the Spirit of God. In maybe in varying ways, but we all participate in the way He manifests. And so we see the manifestation of the Spirit is by wisdom, you see that, and by knowledge. Let's keep reading just so that we can understand the, the just the fullness of how wonderful this manifestation is. Number nine, to another faith by the same Spirit, right? To another gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Notice that's always referencing the capital S, which we know is the Holy Spirit. Verse 10, to another, the working of miracles. Are y'all there? To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But look what the Bible says. But all these worketh, that one itself, same spirit, capital S, dividing to every man, severally, as he will. So notice that we, we are, the Spirit of God isn't just going to give you one gift. He's going to give you many gifts. Did y'all catch that? So I want you to write this grouping down. For, and for some of you that, that are, are, are working, in fact, just to show hands, who is working or has been working or does, let me just say, I, I don't want, I, I hate using this in this context to say, um, who is desirous, let me say it like that better, of working in the gift of prophecy. Who, who here? It, raise your hand real high because I want to see you. Okay. So you're desirous of the gift of prophecy, right? So I want you to write these parents. For the, everybody write it down, but in particular those that are, 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 are I would pray that all of you be prophets. <laughs> so I don't want to categorize it like that, but I just have to say in the, in the context that for those that are here, they want to work in the gift of or, or in the gift of prophecy and those things that pertain to that. Let me write this down. I want you to write down prophecy. I want you to write down knowledge and wisdom. And over the heading there, I want you to put revelatory gifts. So what you're asking God is for revelation, revelatory ability. Okay. Uh, uh, and so, so with the gift of prophecy... And, and, and I believe many of you are working in that direction. And I'm, I'm going to be, put those hands back up again. Let me see your hands again. And I'm going to do my best to, to start calling on you in service. Because if you haven't already noticed, I'm going to start calling on you on Sundays and, and times, even on Sunday nights and, and Wednesdays, to share what's on your heart, what God has inside of you. Right? There's something that God has inside of you. I, I'll prove it. And I know it's going to be kind of weird. Fonz, I saw you raise your hand back there, right, Fonz? Fonz, I want you to stand up real quick. Just stand up. I'm just going to test this, right? Fonz, you, 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 you desire to work in, in a revelatory way with God, right? Um, and I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to exhort the gift inside of you, okay? Because I believe God is, you wouldn't raise your hand, you wouldn't say that unless you really believed or desired to see that gift manifest in your life. Prophecy uh, as you all know, is 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 a message. Uh, sometimes that message has a, a connection to what we're going to see in the future. Right? But we know that prophecy speaks also to right now in many contexts, right? And so we know that when a person brings a, 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 a prophetic word, it edifies people. How many know that the, the prophetic word is an edification? Uh, your uh, uh, Andrew, you sharing. Uh, and exercising that gift in your life, that's how that works. Uh, as somebody spoke in tongues, my mom, I know my mom interprets, so she interpreted this morning, so you'll see, the Bible says that when you come together, there should be a prophetic word. There should be a hymn. There should be a tongue. There should be an interpretation. Why? Because it edifies us. It builds us up, right? And so you saw that each one of these. So Fonz, just just right now, is there anything in your spirit? It could be a, a just to show you, watch a, a scripture, 
something the Lord put inside of you. It, it could be anything that you would want to say right now. Anything that, that is inside of you. Go ahead. There was uh, something that I shared with Pastor Josh this morning. Okay. And it was for, for the church. Okay. And the Spirit was saying that He's bringing unity to the leadership. That we're no longer going to pray on laborers. We're going to pray for laborers. That's it. So basically, we're not going to put any more burden on laborers. We're going to actually labor with Him and labor together. Man. And that what we've gone through, what, we go, or what we're going through, He's bringing unity there and He's going to restore it. To get us past where we're at right now. Is that not a beautiful word? Is that not a beautiful yeah. word? Yeah. Uh, 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 let, let me, let me, do you see how that works? So, I, I didn't know you spoke with Pastor Josh, but the, there was already a word inside of you. That's how that gift works. And so when he speaks it, the Lord is saying, hey, I'm going to be doing something new. And, and that the newness that I'm bringing is going to unify you. And we know that unity, let, let, me, let me look at this, and, and, and don't, don't get mad at me if I get this wrong. I'm, I'm just real quickly looking here, and if it's not there, I'm going to look over here. Just, to, just in my, uh, here it is, Psalms 133. Let me read this. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard. That went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon. And as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. Even life forevermore. So you can see how that word. And the exhortation. And the way the spirit moves me. In connection to the scriptures. How they all co-labor together. To bring a blessing to the house of the Lord. Listen. I can tell you just by saying that. That. That's the command of God's blessing right here at Harvest Point. I received that in Jesus' name. How many can say amen to that? Amen. Thank you, Brother Fons. You, I, I had no idea that I just pointed you out at random, but the Spirit guided that conversation. I want you to see that all of you can operate prophetically. All of you can operate prophetically. But even more so those that are lifting their hand and saying, I want to operate in that gifting. And we know, I, and, I, and I just, I want you to see that a, a, a prophetic word doesn't always have a, a, a future attached to it. And I realize that a lot of people when they hear, more times than not, prophecy re will refer to a future thing and we see prophecy as something that hasn't happened yet. But prophecy also exhorts us right now. Everybody say hallelujah. So I want you to think about that as you think about that gift. So we wrote that heading down when we said revelatory. So everybody here that, that desires to work in that gift of prophecy or is working in that gift of prophecy, you might be here and you're already operating. I want you to add to that gift the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. Okay. So Wednesday night, I'll be talking about the word of wisdom. Remember what it says, the word of wisdom. So it's not the gift of wisdom. It's not the gift of knowledge. It's the gift of the word of knowledge. And the gift of the word of wisdom. And I want you to make sure you write that plainly in your notes. That we're talking about a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. Very important that we make that separation. So this is what it is. So, so let's get back. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And so we were reading through all of these. And of course as we got uh, to, to the end of that. I just thought uh, that would help to exhort you to see that the manifestation of that is given to every man. And in verse 11. The Spirit is dividing to every man severally. And I just wanted you to see the pluralistic value of saying that you're not just going to get one gift. You're going to get many gifts. And, the, and, and, and I can tell you just out of a, out of a common knowledge of, of these gifts is that normally they're all going to work collectively and together. So, so let me give you this. The word of knowledge. The gift of the word of knowledge. I want you to write down this definition. I, I, I wrote down one this last week, but it might have been too simple. So I, I, I wrote down one just to kind of put this in my mind. And I'm just going gonna, I'm just, I'm just to write this. So just, just write this as a, a general statement. These are, you know, the, this is not real technical. It's just my thought on a piece of paper. But I think it's sufficient enough to describe the gift of the word of knowledge. So write this down. The Holy Spirit, this is a, a very simple definition. The Holy Spirit revealing some fact or truth about someone past or present. That's just my layman's version of an explanation of that gift. So let me read that. Let me, let me say it again. The Holy Spirit 
revealing some fact or truth about someone past or present. So, so in other words, typically a word of knowledge is God giving you something about someone that's already happened and you wouldn't know about that unless God told you about it. So it's a, it's a private matter, it's a private thing, or it's something that you wouldn't know unless God revealed it to you. Now, of course, let's, let's, let's go look at a few examples, and then this might, this might inspire, uh, maybe if, if this might have happened to you already, you just didn't recognize it. And that's why Apostle Paul said, I don't want you to be ignorant about the gifts. That's why it's important for us to study it, so that when you see that thing working, you're not going to say it's prophetic, you're going to know exactly what that's doing. Exactly what the Spirit of God is. You'll be able to distinguish the gifts as they're manifesting in you. Because I believe they're going to manifest and have probably already manifested. You just didn't understand what was happening. So, so uh, St. John chapter 4, let's, let's just go look at this. And you can see how, how easily people might misconstrue or misunderstand something prophetic. And then I'm going to give a few references here. I've got uh, St. John 11, we'll, we'll visit 2 Kings and 2 Samuel. Just a few things to kind of wet your whistle. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll show you uh, Apostle Paul uh, in, his, in his conversion, how he had a dream of Ananias coming to him. That's Acts 9. We'll look at that here in just a moment. But if you're, if you're there in St. John 4, slide your finger down here uh, to, to, to verse 15. Uh, I hope today, oh, I hope today that, that somebody, somebody heard the message that God wants you to give somebody a drink of some living water. Amen. How, how many today believe that you're that fountain? Yes. In, in, fact, in fact, are you are you in John? Are you in John? Go with me to St. John 7. Put your Bible ribbon there. Uh, I just feel the Spirit of God talking to me. You don't mind if I just be led of the Spirit? Uh, just, just in a moment, just be, be, be kind of led of this thought just so that it, it'll stick to you, stick to you like, a, like good barbecue sauce on some ribs or something. Are you there? Say, are you there in St. John 7? Are you there in St. John 7? Go with me down to verse 37. If you, if, if write this down in your notes because I want you to know that the Spirit of God manifests in us and that manifestation is, is what Jesus referred to as living water. Look what it says here, St. John 7. Like in, in verse 37 says, And in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried, If any man thirst, let him come unto me. It's all right, Cindy. It's all right. Now, you're not supposed to be pinching or anything like that. You, you weren't pinching or anything? No. You always should have candy on hand. That usually works for you. <laughs> so it says, In the last day, the great day of the feast, look what it says, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. He that believeth on me, catch this now, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. So out of your belly, out of your innermost being, out of your spiritual man, will flow the Holy Spirit. Now, when you just there in your notes, put living water, and then just put an equal signs, Holy Ghost. Because that's what Jesus said. That, that, and, and if you're the temple... Right? You're the temple of it. You ought to flow, Holy Ghost. Right? Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Right? How, 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 many, how many today, today uh, we went to go eat, and you know, you go to a restaurant, and usually when you go to your restaurant, you expect them to be flowing with food, right? Who would say amen to that? How many have been some places when you said, uh, I, I laughed one time, I had a friend of mine said he, years ago, he said he went to go have a, a BLT. How many know what a BLT is? Raise your hand, you know what a BLT is. Bacon, lettuce, and tomato. Right? <laughs> And so uh, he ordered a BLT and, and uh, a Coca-Cola, and they brought him the sandwich, and he, he said he got about three or four bites into it, and he was waiting to taste the bacon. But, but he never got the savor of the bacon, so he opened up the sandwich, and, and it was just lettuce and tomato. So he called the waiter over, uh, got a question about my BLT. He says, and, and so the waiter says, oh, no, uh, we ran out of bacon. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. My dad said, well, how come you're still bringing it? Oh, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Why would you bring me the BLT without the bacon? 
right? Because that's what BLT, right? Well, it's an LT. The BLT, bread, lettuce, tomato. We expect that to flow, right? Right? Because that's what it is. Brother and sister, when you show up, we ought to see the Spirit of God flow. That's what you are. Right? Nobody goes to IHOP to have a hamburger. Right? There's an international house of pancakes by my house. In the morning, it's packed. But in the afternoon, ain't nobody want to eat over there. Because they, I want you to make pancakes. And I'm going to eat. You know, how many can say amen to that? There's things that people do right. You know, and that's what you do. Right? If anything we should be doing right is the Holy Spirit. We should be flowing in the Holy Ghost. And this is what Jesus was saying. He says, he that believeth on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. How many of the day say you believe in Jesus? My hand goes up. He says, out of you, believers, will flow rivers of living water. It's you. Right? And then look what it says. Verse 39, and this kind of brings us uh, into some context of what we're speaking. But this he, but this spake he of the Spirit, capital S, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given. given. Did y'all hear that? So it wasn't given yet because he had not, you know, Jesus had not died yet. He had not been glorified yet. So it wasn't given yet. But we know Jesus said, I'm going to send him back. I'm going to give to you, right? Somebody say, hallelujah, that's a great thought. Are y'all following that? So I just want you to see that. So, so when we get back over here, uh, St. John 4, let's flip back and we'll, 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 we'll see this. Because I want you to distinguish the living water is the Holy Ghost. The living water is the Holy Spirit. Everybody get that, right? So that tonight when you leave, just know you're flowing with living water, right? And so, sometime this week, will you give somebody a drink of that water? Yeah. Put it say hallelujah. Yes. Give somebody a drink this week of your living water. <coughs> Listen, it's flowing out of you. You've got, you've got, you've got water to spare. Put it say hallelujah. And this is the plan of God. So watch this. Of course, this is St. John uh, 4, verse 15. And the woman said unto me, I went back and read verse 13. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh the water of this well will get thirsty again. Y'all there? Verse 13. Verse 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not Neither come hither to draw. And Jesus said, okay, here's your first drink. Go get your husband. Did y'all hear what happened? Did you see the drink he's giving? He says, I want a drink of the living water. Okay, I want a drink. Can I have, yes, I'm going to give you the living water. Go get your husband. That's the first sip she ever had of living water. Let's go get your husband. And then watch what happens. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Huh. Jesus must be a liar then. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. I, I must have got it wrong. No, he's given her a drink of the manifestation of the spirit by a word of knowledge. Y'all catching that? You see that? So she says, I want a drink, right? I've got something to give you to drink. He didn't, he didn't reach down and give her some you know, spiritual platitude. What he did was he let her taste of the gift of the word of knowledge. She is literally tasting, drinking the flowing of living water out of Jesus' life. And so this is what he says. Thou hast well said I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands. Somebody say that ain't good. That's what you see on... Uh, on Mari Povich. Yeah. There we go. There you go. You are the father. Come on, somebody. We don't know whose dad is whose dad, right? Right? We're going to find out whose baby daddy it is. 
I love that this story is in the Bible because it shows you that people were acting up back in Jesus' day. They're acting up today. Ain't no difference with people, right? She had five husbands, and he says, and the one you're with now, you're just shacking up with him. He's not even your husband. And so watch what happens. She says, the woman said unto him, sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Wrong. Well, he's a prophet of sort. He's a prophet of all prophets. But that's not the gift that he's exercising. She wouldn't have no understanding of that, as the world doesn't understand it. But Jesus was giving her a taste of the word of knowledge. And of course, we know that we get into this engagement of this spiritual conversation. And then look what it says there. Slide your finger down to verse 25. And the woman saith unto him, I know that the Messiah is cometh, which is called Christ. And when he is come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said, said unto her, I that speak unto thee and he. So I want you to see how there's a revelatory process, right, in the word of knowledge. There's the prophetic process and the wisdom on how to use it together to draw somebody to the feet of God. See it working. So he's exercising revelatory ability, both in knowledge, prophecy, and wisdom. I want to show you in that man named Nathan how Nathan <coughs> used it in that same revelatory way. And so look what it says. And the woman, right? In fact, I, I, I'm skipping a part there, but I, I, let me go to verse 28. And the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith unto the men, Come see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? Guess what? She's a believer. She's a believer. That awesome. And all he did was give her a taste of what? One of the gifts of the Spirit. Are y'all catching that? Yeah. Is, is, that a, is that a beautiful is that a beautiful expression of how that gift works? Okay, go with me to Second Samuel. And, and I'm gonna stop on this one, okay, because uh, it's already kind of late. It's already kind of late. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And, 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 is, is that is that kind of invigorating your spirit a little bit? Second Samuel chapter five. 2 Samuel chapter 5. Let me, let me see if I like this right here. Maybe I don't. 2 uh, uh, Samuel 12. Pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. 2 Samuel 12. I'm looking at another text too. I'm, 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 when we come back, when we come back on Wednesday, oh man, I may only be able to finish this on Wednesday because I, I, don't, I don't know. Do y'all... I know everybody's going to raise your hand because you don't want nobody to front you out or anything. But, um, do y'all want to look? Do y'all want to go ten more minutes in this lesson? Yes. Is there anybody got ten minutes to spare? Are y'all right? Look down at your clock real quick because I got I got seven like seven forty two. Y'all want to go ten more minutes? Yes. Can you go ten more minutes? Come yes. on. I mean, you can. You really go ten more minutes in the Bible. I don't want to wear you out. <laughs> How many won? Yeah. I'm like that person when you go to the party, that last piece of pizza, nobody wants to eat it because it's the last piece. I'll come up there and boom. Because <laughs> if you're hungry, you're going to eat it. <coughs> I'm going to say, hallelujah. Okay, 2 Samuel 12. And I'm just going to share this. Uh, and, then, and then when we come back on Wednesday, I'll, I'll, I'll share some more about it. Watch how there is the expression of the word of knowledge, see if you catch it. David, of course, has been in a monstrous <clears throat> affair with Bathsheba. Horrible thing has happened. Uh, as of this particular hour, the only persons walking in the knowledge of that or, or, in, or anyone in the knowledge of that is David, Bathsheba, and God himself. Uh, and then God speaks to Nathan, the prophet. Want you to hear it. Chapter 12. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, Watch the wisdom. Because remember, you're before the king. How many know when you get before the king back in those days, they take your head off if you came in an inappropriate way? So Nathan knows what's going on, and there's a wisdom here on how to share what God has shared with him. So that David could receive it and see the error of his ways. 
I want you to see the wisdom. This is probably one of the greatest examples of a word of wisdom in the whole of the Bible. Look at how Nathan gives to David uh, this word of wisdom and then it's going to move into a word of knowledge. Watch, check this out. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David and he came unto him and said unto him, there were two men in, in, a, in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing, save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought up and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drink of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. Y'all catching that? So you get this picture of this little ewe lamb in the house. How many know that that isn't too weird? People keep pigs. You ever notice not too long ago people were having pigs as pets? Is that still going on, by, by the way? Or, or did that, that fad go away? Huh? So I, I, got, I got my Sky at the house. And Sky, he'll, you know, he's there. And, and everybody's always trying to tell him, quit giving him Oreos. <laughs> oh, my God. I give my dog Oreo fins. He likes them. This guy loves Oreos. Right? My family gets mad at me. But I say, he's part of the family. If I'm having an Oreo cookie, he going to get him an Oreo cookie. <laughs> huh? if, if I'm eating Cheetos, guess what he going to be eating? Cheetos. <laughs> what did the woman say in great faith? Even dogs get to eat the crumbs that fall from the mouth. <laughs> Shane, I know that you're going to be helping care for little Sky when we take vacation this summer. I'm going to give you a big pack of Oreo Thins, and every night you slip them too, and he's going to be real happy. He gets two Oreo Thins before he goes to sleep. Everybody gets a little snack before they go to bed. So you can see this man, he loves this little ewe lamb. It's eating with him. It's with the family. And I'm sure David's listening to the story and he's already seen that this ewe lamb is endeared. Him, that, that, that there's, a, there's a relational quality with this, with this ewe lamb. And verse 4 says, And there came a traveler unto, unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that which was coming to him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. So in other words, what he's saying is, instead of taking up his own, he's rich. He went and took that little ewe lamb and killed it and butchered it and fried it up or roasted it up and gave when he had all the abundance of many things. Now, you may not know this, but David had hundreds. Let me say it again. Hundreds of wives. How many knew that? Raise your hand if you knew that David had hundreds of wives. How many did not know David had hundreds of wives? Listen, you think David was bad, you got to see Solomon. He had over a thousand of them. Right. <laughs> 800, and then he had others to the side. I mean, there, there were all kinds of, they, they had women. And, and, and all they were waiting for is just an opportunity to be with the king. Are y'all a little, a little surprised at that? My dad said no. <laughs> they were kings. No, I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement. I, I, I would probably say he probably should have just stick with one, but you know, he didn't turn out that way. You're a king, you're going to have all of that. Right? Now be careful, mom's right there. Right there. Next to you. My mom said, you better not put that in your mind. <laughs> Which, by the way, in case you didn't know, today's my dad's birthday. Yeah. After we get through, Dad, we're going to sing you happy birthday. I told, I told the first lady, so when we get to church tonight, we've got to sing happy birthday to my dad. Amen. I, I, I'm not going to tell you, tell them how old you are, but you're somewhere in the 70s somewhere. somewhere. So, 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 so. Uh, low 70s, Pastor Josh said, low 70s, low 70s. So look what it says. So the rich man came, and he didn't take of his own flock. He took the ewe lamb and dressed it. And look what verse 5 said. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And look what he said. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall. He pronounced his own sentence. Catch it. 
How many know that's wisdom? I mean, he could have said it to him another way. David may ne never saw the error of his ways until Nathan used a word of wisdom. You see it? Then look what happens. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. So notice how the word of knowledge is now being used. David, I know what you did. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel and delivered thee out of the hand of Israel. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives unto thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had not been too little, I would have moreover, I would have moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do this evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart. Now we get to revelatory gift. The gift of prophecy. Do you, are y'all seeing this? Yes. This, is, this is profound. This is rich with how you see these gifts work together. So it says, now therefore the sword shall never depart from thy house. Because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord God, because I, behold I will rise up evil against thee out of thy own house. And we know about the story of Absalom. And I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbors and they shall lie with their wives in the sight of the sun. And we saw that happening in the scripture. There was a, the, the, that literally happened. The wives of David were, were exposed in that, uh, 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 in that open sexuality, which, which was an open, a, a very open sore before the nation of Israel to see that happen in such a way. Verse 12, for thou, dost, for thou did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all of Israel and before the sun. And David said unto Nathan, look what he says, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. Oh God, catch this. Howbeit because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. See that? I mean, oh, that's awesome. Cynthia, you put your hand up back there. Yeah, I just had a question. I feel like I already know the answer, but I just I wanted to see what you guys said. I know that's the Old Testament, so the things that God would do then were. But sometimes I've heard of people going to places where somebody ministered to them and somebody spoke a word that seemed, I, I want to use the word negative, I guess, um, towards them. And the, the Bible says, you know, follow the way of love and evil lives are to good, you know, especially prophecy. So. Would you say that nowadays that that is something that could be prophesied? Like, or would you? you know, I would encourage everybody here, and, and you guys realize that a prophetic word that comes, the Bible says that in the church, that prophets are subject to the spirit of other prophets. So I, I know that, let me encourage anybody here, never get a word on your own. Never. I, I'm not going to get a word of my own until somebody confirms that word. And I'm waiting for people with spiritual authority to confirm that word, not just someone or something. I'm waiting for those particular things to fall into a particular place. If you ever get a word, I'm not saying to refuse the word. There are words that I keep that I've just kept for years because they've never been confirmed. Never, they, they've never, and, and they've never come to pass, which kind of leads me to believe that the person who gave it to him wasn't operating in that gifting, or maybe was out of, they weren't walking as they should, or maybe sometimes we presumptuously say things on behalf of God. In fact, the Bible says in the Old Testament that if a man presumes to speak on behalf of God, That's right. and if he says something that doesn't come to pass, they were commanded to kill that, that person. Because they don't speak for God. Because whatever God speaks, that comes to pass. So I always exhort people to say, when you get a prophetic word, it's not to say that we refuse it. But, but here, here's, and, and keep it, and, 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 and hold on to it, to see what God wants to do with that thing. Because you might be hearing something prophetic. Here's what I say the scriptures teach. That, that, that when we hear a word, even prophets are subject to the spirit of other prophets. Where when they're speaking, the other ones are affirming that that word is accurate. So we need those other prophets 
working together to ensure that what's being said is of the mind of God. Very important that we understand. That's a, that's a principle that we have to keep in motion. Particularly when people are going to be speaking, we want to make sure that if somebody speaks in a prophetic nature, now, we can still speak a scripture, we can still speak exhortationally, and we know that if we're always aligned in the scripture, because one of the first ways that the, the, the gift of prophecy begins to work is the reciting of scripture. So in other words, you might, you might be in, in your prayer life, and I'm going to talk about this on Wednesday, how the Spirit of God works with me as in relationship to the word of knowledge. But even so much so to say a prophetic word where I can be in my prayer closet, and, and, and while I'm praying, the Spirit of God will show me somebody with the scripture reference. So I, the, the person's image comes into my mind, and then the scripture comes with it. And so I'll pull that person aside and say, I was praying for you, and this is what the Spirit of God gave me. This is the scripture he gave me to give to you. And, and, and normally what I'll do then is I'll pr be prayerful because I believe I'm responsible for that. So I want God to share with me, and this is what I was going to share with you, that I want God to share with me a word of knowledge. Give me something about this particular situation. That allows me to share something so that this person will know that they're hearing from God. Right? Some of y'all remember my Waffle House experience where uh, Pastor Josh and uh, Pastor Marcus, myself, were coming home late one night from visiting somebody in the hospital. It was an accident or something, and we were leaving Methodist Hospital. It was probably 2 or 3 in the morning. I went into Waffle House, and, and I told the Lord when I got out of the car, I don't want to do any ministry right now because I'm really tired. I just want to go eat my waffles, and I'm going to go home. And so when I went in, I began to hear the Lord speak to me about the man sitting next to me, and I didn't want to talk to him. And so finally I said, I said, sir, I've got to tell you something. And he looked at me like, like what? I remember, I remember this specifically because he had a knife, and he was cutting his, his eggs like you cut steak. It's kind of weird. And so anyway, I was saying, it's kind of weird. Anyway, uh, but the Lord told me to tell you that you're going the wrong direction, you need to go back. You have ministry to do. You're supposed to be pastoring. And I went back to my food. Because I didn't want to minister. <laughs> I was that tired. And then I noticed from the corner of my eye, he wasn't eating. He was like, <laughs> and, I, and then I looked at him, and he's weeping. And he looks back at me and says, you see that truck out there? I got a job yesterday. Because my dad came to me two days ago and said that he was retiring. He's a pastor in Louisiana. And he said the Lord had spoke to him that I should be the new pastor. And so I ran from it. I got this truck. And I, I got this. I had to take this uh, delivery across the state. I forgot exactly where he was going. And he said, I came into Waffle House tonight. And when I was in my truck, I told the Lord this. I said, if you are real. If you are who you say you are, if this is my assignment, if this is what you to do, send somebody here tonight to tell me. And if you don't talk to me tonight, I'm going to take that load and I'm going to keep going and living my life. And he says, and here you are. He says, I'm going to drop that load off and I'm going to go right back and beg my father to get back into the ministry. So you see how a prophetic word, right? Hey, this, you know. Coupled with knowledge that, hey, you're supposed to, you know, that you, you're running from something. I wouldn't know that unless God would deliver that. So you could see how all of that came together. Had I been more attuned, I probably could have gave him a lot more wisdom. But I was being a little negligent. You know, <laughs> but he's still working that. I want you to see where those gifts, those revelatory gifts, if they're working together, if a word comes that seems to be somewhat harsh, if it's marked by wisdom and marked by knowledge, you can't refuse it. That's right. You can't refuse it. It'll speak right to you. There's no way. Because if somebody came up to you and says, listen, uh, I, I want to tell you something about your past that nobody knows except God and you. And if a prophet comes and tells you about your past and says, and here's the message, God's got your attention. And there's going to be no way you can be dismissive about what the prophet said because he's speaking directly to you. Right? So I tell people, if you're a prophet, get the word of knowledge and get that word of wisdom because you're going to need that. Right? And, and you know, you've seen a lot of people get torn up and flipped upside down with people saying, hey, I saw you get married and, you know, the Lord saw, showed me you get married, but he didn't tell you who. And the bozo she's dating, you, she thinks you're talking about the bozo she's dating. <laughs> and then they go running off with Mr. Bozo. <laughs> if we wait and, and get the wisdom, 
we could say, the Lord showed me you saw him get married, but it wasn't the guy I saw you with. Right. Right. And by the way, let me give you a word of knowledge so you don't know I'm speaking to you on behalf of God. So you see how those things are, all those are mutually inclusive of each other to convey them the thought and the mind of God. Go ahead. Uh, I just, when you were saying that I wanted to share another testimony, my cousin was in the service and God had given her a word that somebody had the spirit of murder on them. Spirit of murder. 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 And so she was about me and you stand up in church and say yeah. let me tell you what I saw you doing man and it's nasty <laughs> you know shows you somebody was abused sexually in their infant or in their younger years. How many of those that's something you want to say out loud in public? Right. You, you, you know, if you're going to minister that, you got to get wisdom on how to share that again because how many know you're going to drudge up some pretty hurtful thoughts and if you've got something prophetic, you want them to receive it right. so you learn how to do that privately. Yeah. You learn how to make an occasion <clears throat> where you can share that not with everybody listening. Right. Are y'all with that? So you can see how the Spirit of God is very selective with that because you have to have a lot of maturity as to when you share that and where you share. Because that person, we want to make sure the most important thing is the message that follows and couples with the word of knowledge. Right? Because the word of knowledge comes because God wants you to draw that person towards Him. So you can see there's complexity in that. And it's, very, it's, it's a gift that you have to be responsible with. Because you're going to know things about people that, and sometimes they're, they're not personal per se, but sometimes they are. And there have been times where the Lord has shown me things about people that are very personal. But I've already, I, you know, being a pastor, I'm accustomed to hearing things and knowing things. And there's nothing new under the sun, obviously. And so I know that there's, there's some things my wife, is my, is first lady, my wife, she's been with me in some of the counseling sessions. And her and I know things, and we say to each other, we're going to die with those things. We're never going to share them again. And they're just not, they're not something that we want to share because they're deeply personal. People have, there's a lot of people in this church that have been through some very, very hurtful things. And we just, there's no value in repeating them, right? And so you can see that you have to have a certain level of, I like what the Lord says, you have to have a certain amount of love and compassion for these gifts to really operate in your life, right? You have to love each other. Pastor Joshua, what do you say something? Pastor, uh, I, I wanted to uh, reiterate what you mentioned earlier about when a prophet may speak to you that it's important that you do treasure it to keep it and let it be confirmed because Jeremiah 23, 16 talks about prophets that speak out of visions out of their own heart. That's right. But not out of the mouth of the Lord. That's right. And in Matthew 7, 15, Jesus said one of the signs of the end time would be false prophets. That's right. And it talks about how you can recognize a true prophet and a false prophet. Y'all want to go look at that? I know exactly where you're at. You're on the Sermon on the Mount. You're going to hear it right here. This is Matthew 7, 15. You, you, for any of you that, that have a little trouble, any of you that are having trouble uh, with this particular text, uh, and of course there's references here, uh, as Pastor Josh said, through Jeremiah, it's also Jeremiah 11 would be a good, uh, a good verse to read. I, I want you to see something here. You see where it says, where Pastor Josh says, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. So you know a prophet's going to live a righteous life, right? 
One of the ways, listen, brother and sister, one of the ways that we see, you, you know what we first see when people are slipping? You know what people, let me tell you how you know when people are slipping spiritually. They start talking. It's good. They talk. And listen to what they're saying. We'll tell you yeah. that something's wrong with the tree. Mm -hmm. good. Do men gather, gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, and every corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. And where you see the word tree, right? When you see the word tree, just put heart. That's true. You see that? You see that? You see where, you see where it says, for every, even so every good tree, you see where it says tree? Say heart. And where you see fruit, put words. Just so you understand what Jesus is saying. So every good heart bringeth forth good words. And every bad or corrupt heart bringeth forth evil words. Y'all catch that? A good heart cannot bring forth evil words. Neither can a corrupt heart bring forth good words. Every heart that bringeth not forth good words is hewn down and cast into the fire. You see where Jesus is still talking about words because he's talking about who? The prophet. He's talking about prophecies. How many know prophecies? Words. How many say hallelujah? hallelujah. It, 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 Pastor Josh, that's a good, good way to end that lesson right there. Are y'all exhorted by that? Amen? Amen. So look, we're going to keep, keep, you know, if, 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 how many in here you can keep a secret? Raise your hand, you can keep a secret. Raise your hand, you, I mean, you can keep a secret. That you're not, you're not looking around and saying, man, let me tell you something. <laughs> I mean, you keep a secret. If we gave you a secret, you're going to keep the secret. Raise your hand if you keep a secret. You're going to tell us all the secret right now? What, what, Mom? You're going to tell us all the secret right now? No. Because <laughs> I don't trust y'all. Y'all going to tell us secret. No, raise your hand if you keep a secret. I mean, you can really keep a secret. If you keep a secret, you might be able to get the gift of the word of knowledge. Because if you can't keep quiet, being quiet, maybe you may not be the one God wants to be telling things personally. All right. Let's do this. Are y'all ready? You got your vocalizer warmed up? Kind of clear your throat. We got to sing happy birthday to your dad. It's his birthday today. Do you want to tell people how old you are, dad? Or no, we're going to keep that a secret. You don't mind? Dad, tell them how old you are. 77. 77. I tell the Lord all the time, my wife's a witness, I tell the Lord I'm thankful that her mom and dad are well past 70. Uh, her mom's already in her early 80s, 81, 80, 83. And then, uh, you know, my parents are past it, into their 70s now, and they're healthy, you know, and moving about. And my mother and father in law are healthy, moving about. I know they're all borrowed time. <laughs> The most of us. So I think of it that way. My mom and dad are like a little nervous. <laughs> They're on borrow sign. But who's here? Who's here? Maybe getting close to late fifties. Fifty. Fifty. In your how many are in your fifties? Which in your fifties? You you're under a quarter tank. <laughs> how many how many here in sixties? Anybody sixty? Okay. So you know that little fuel light that comes on? <laughs> I, I say that because, you know, when I, when I do funerals, you know, people get mad because they think everybody's going to live a long time. Right. The Bible says our lives are like vapors. And Jesus says tomorrow's not promised to any one of us. So we, you know, we, we think of that. And so I only say that I'm thankful. I say it in that way to say I'm thankful that my dad is 77. That's, that's, that's a, a long time coming, right, Dad? Yeah. yeah. We do want to have a party for him tomorrow, so can we pray that we can party tomorrow? <laughs> Let's pray that the party happens. <laughs> God's grace. We're going to trust God's grace, Mama, that we'll, we, we're, having a, we're having a shindig for my dad tomorrow. We're going to go party. 77 years is a long time. Dad, just, just to let people know, what, what's your birth date? That, 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 that year, the year you were born. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's what happened. 
1940. That's that's pre World War II. Just to put it, put it into context, right? So my dad grew up in a time when the world was at war with with uh, Germany. So that puts that into perspective, right? And so uh, anyway, I'm just just to give you just a little glimpse into the last century. Uh, we're thankful that my dad's still moving. He still moves yeah. about. Yes, he, 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 he went and took a physical. The doctor said he's doing fine. But it's just a, a blessing. I'm going to say amen to that. I say it for your parents too. Some of y'all's parents are getting up in age. Look at brother, brother Sister Connell. They, they, they're, they're workers serving the Lord. It's always good to see the, the, the family of God in health and strength. And I'm just thankful, right? And so when, when we get a party, you should be thankful. We have a birthday party. <laughs> You celebrate, man, because you don't know if that's your last one. So can we sing my dad happy birthday? Are you going to read something? Well. Yeah, read really, it, Dad. Uh, it says here, Psalms 90. Read it, Dad. That's verse 10. Right. It says, the days of our year are three score years and, and ten. ten. So that's 70. 70. And Dick, King David was saying himself, that was about when he died, too, around yeah. 70 years old. Uh, and if by reason, this is true here. Four and score. And if by reason of strength, they be four scores years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow. That's, what, that's right. That's, what, that's why you say, well, once you pass uh, 70, uh, you get into the 80s, you're living all right, but there's a lot of hurting. Right. There. You're, you're hurting. Every day yeah. you hurt, new hurts come up on you. Right. And, and your leg hurts you stomach hurts and all that. So, past 70 years, you you might live that part, but there's going to be a lot of labor and sorrow. Or it is soon cut off and we fly away. That's it. Yeah. And you like that? We can soon cut off, which we know Ecclesiastes is, he used the wisdom of the knowledge of God to say that silver cord that keeps your body and your spirit together, that's cut. And your spirit flies to be with God. Yes. Isn't it so awesome to think that Jesus knows how to get back from there? I tell people, when you die, listen, you don't control your spirit. Something's going to control you. I'm so glad that when I die, Jesus is going to be waiting for me. He's going to take my spirit take it to be with God. Isn't that awesome? He knows the way, right? How many know Jesus knows the way? He's the only one that went to heaven in his spirit. And came back and picked up his own body. And so he's going to do that for me. Somebody said hallelujah. Okay, let's sing happy birthday to my dad. Y'all ready? You got your vocalizer ready? Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you.